pause on demographics and start and add the things that we've been talking about to this list. I think that everybody got a copy of this, what we've done so far. We'll just add some of the things that came up today to this list. And this shouldn't take too long because it's pretty just listing them. And then the other, it'll be more time for the other discussions. Does that make sense? Okay, so what were some of the things that we asked for today, Andrew? You had a couple. I have a couple. Um, so looking to get Beth's rough projection number pre-October before we have to put out the initial report. Oh, yeah. That was one, even if it's a ballpark, but just something to give us some more operating information. Um, a conversation I wanted to circle back to at some point um, was the OPEP payments that were taken out from 2010. Uh, I can't remember when they stopped, 2015 maybe. Yes. Um, I wanted to look back at that. Um, I think on one of Treasurer Pierce's slides, it said 2010 to 2020, and I was just curious about that. Um, but I wanted to talk about that in general. Uh, also asking uh, Treasurer Pierce about the what the total value dollar amount would be from the previous underfunding pre-2008, um, also factoring in lost opportunity costs um, for uh, gains in the market. Um, figure out what that dollar amount would be. I have loads of demographics questions. I don't know if that's the, I, the, I don't know if you want all of those now or what would be best for that. Um, well, I think that the treasurer's office <coughs> had um, gave us this, which um, has there's two new handouts. handouts. There's two new okay. handouts. Right. Here, one with um, BSERS and one with BSERS demographic. So a lot of that you know, the question might be answered okay. in here. So maybe maybe we'll just put a question mark here for demographics, and then as we um, as people go through the individually and look at them. It might answer a lot of our questions. That makes just sense. Um, can we put one uh, just caveat on that? That I also have just some general state of Vermont questions, not necessarily about the VSTERS demographics and the VSERS demographics, but just general state of Vermont. State of questions. Vermont. I think uh, we have that on here someplace, but okay. we'll add it again. Yeah. And for folks who are following along on the live feed, the all of the documents that we are handed here at the table will will be on our uh, landing page for the task force. Um, so all of those resources should be available for, for the general public to look at as well. And I flagged uh, a couple of other items uh, that, that um, would be nice if we could um, get info from the treasurer's office if it's available. Um, one picks up on um, Andrew's point about um, un, uh, con employer contributions. Um, the data I've seen for the state employee system is limited. So um, if we could get a longer record of uh, employer contributions, uh, that would be great. Um, projections around the amortization schedule when it was um, put into effect, uh, just so we know um, where we should have been and where we are now and uh, and kind of evaluate why, where that Delta came from. I think that would be helpful and might also be helpful in looking at amortization um, options going forward um, and projections around the retirement. Um, if those are available uh, when they, they went in effect and that's specific to the state side, I think. You mean, you mean the, the retired, the incentives that had been offered before and what was the result of them? Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> Those were the three items I had, I had flagged from that conversation. Anything else that came up? Something that we haven't talked about yet, but it's in regards to the general fund, and it's really for JFO. Um, I think this is going to be hard to project, but we need to try to figure it out. What can the general fund actually uh, manage to handle going forward? What type of increases? I mean, we've got on a, a roughly a 3% increase uh, per year, but then always adjusted for market returns that didn't quite fulfill the, the dictates of the, of the ADEC as previously had been. Had 
been, uh, well, we always put in the ADEC, but we always need to make up for less than stellar market returns. But this year it's gone parabolic. So, and then we're resetting the 3% going forward from the parabolic. So, so um, what can the general fund reasonably be expected to handle going forward? Well, and then I might fit nicely under the one here that we had thought that um, <clears throat> one of the issues that we talked about before was the state revenue streams. What are the revenue streams? What, what, what are they capable of? What do they generate? What, what can they? Yep. And um, thinking that uh, Steve Klein could give a lot of that and that would fit nicely in there. <clears throat> Anything else? That and one other piece, um, the folks who were talking, us for, talking to us earlier um, about the state employees, I was asking about exit interview information. I wasn't sure if that's something we could circle back to. Um, I'd also be curious about that on the teacher's side. I don't know exactly where we would get that information from or if there is even any sort of hub. Um, but I think it, it kind of goes back to what I'm always brought up often about the kind of core values piece um, and bringing it down to the individual person level. Um, I would just be curious to see if we can get any of that data if they have it. I, I have no idea if, if the hundred and some uh, lo local districts keep exit interviews and how we would even right. begin to have access. Yeah, it's to, for sure. The resource the state. Yeah. So they don't track the system. Really track that. Are there heads of departments that could come to speak to us possibly about in generalities, perhaps. I suspect the Department of Corrections would answer the question of why are people leaving very differently than, for instance, the agency know, of natural resources. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, I, I, I don't, and that's not to discount the the value of that information, but I think it's probably pretty job specific, yeah. dress specific, mm -hmm. um, working conditions specific, which uh, may be valuable, but is sort of complicated. You know, it might be, what might be better is to look at, and I don't know if it's been done recently, Tom, you might know, that there was a couple of years ago, an employee sur uh, satisfaction survey done. I'm not sure what that was called, but that we could maybe just even have that posted and have access to it so that we could look at it. I don't know that um, it's something that we need to have somebody talk to us about but i don't tom do you remember when that was done we do them yearly so. oh it's done yearly okay so we could we could just look uh get the get a um a link to the most recent one could we yeah. okay i think that's a really good idea when you know it does, it's not specific to separation but it gives a sense and gives a sense of what and pressures on employees are feeling yeah so yeah and we could just look at that okay I have one other, uh, and I apologize that you don't fall. I had to put up with my voice so many times today. However, the ideas sometimes just pop in. Uh, perhaps it's, you know, working with those younger kids, you have no filter at some point. <laughs> um, so one of the things I was wondering about is, I know VSBA, the School Board Association, did a survey um, back in May talking about um, being able to hire people to come into new teaching positions. I'm not sure if perhaps we could get BSBA to come speak with us about um, their survey. And you know, and even though May sounds relatively recent, that data I'm sure is a little outdated at this point, but perhaps getting somebody there to come talk with us would be helpful information as well. I mean, what would we accomplish with that data? I mean, some of this data yeah. looks good, but I'm starting to wonder as we start to frame up the next few meetings, how useful is the actual information? What, what are you trying to pull from it? Yeah, I, I think the usefulness of the information is thinking about how um, education is already facing lots of threats to it. And right, but like looking for employees, that's the whole economy right now. That's not an education issue. That's not a state of Vermont issue. That's not a municipal <laughs> issue. I, I've got meetings tonight when I get back home. I've got factories who can't find people who will pay seventy thousand dollars a year to like these are job people just can't find people right now. So that's that's an economy wide thing. That's not so. I guess I discount the data where it's impossible to find people right now. Well, everyone's feeling that. That's not going to be the type of push. That's a macro issue, not a micro issue. 
Sure, but it does impact the people though that we're looking at and our tasks to look at under Act 75. Um, and I think part of our mission is to really look at the broader social impacts of any decision making and how that could impact careers and people's decisions to take jobs in this state or going to other states. Um, so getting information from as many sources as possible to give us a fully rounded sense of the picture, I think is always helpful. It comes back to that value proposition that was um, put forth by DHR. Um, you know, it is a macro issue, but, you know, whether it's the state as an employer or whether it's a school district, um, you're out there competing for talent. Um, so how do you, how, how do you compete effectively? Um, and, you know, if, if state or um, school districts are having a um, tough time finding employees, like everyone is, um, I don't think we want to uh, make decisions that, that make that even even harder. We at least want to be conscious of them. Um, so um, I, I, I think it would be useful data. And I guess it would be somewhat useful if we could limit what they're, the time that they're giving us. I mean, just have somebody come in and just say, we can't hire people um, is one thing, but to go into a lot of detail about, I, I'm just a little bit cognizant of our time and how, how that's, many- That's Ryan, I mean, yeah. I don't, I can be convinced, I think there's gonna be meaningful data, but to hear how hard it is to hire people in any industry right now, I get that. That's like a no, no. You know what I mean? Like we get that that's an issue. I mean, we to get kids to mow a lawn in, in the town I work in, you know, we're, we're paying almost seventeen dollars an hour to mow lawns this summer because Walmart's paying sixteen stock shelves. Like that's. I don't think it would take too long to, to get results of the survey, though. I think yeah. that's what Andrew was talking about with survey results. I think we're just asking that organization to provide us with to, yeah, the results we can, of their survey. We can have them provide this with the results. Let's just limit the not amount of time that they present those results. They don't even to need us. to present it. They oh, you just, just it give us. it to us. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Sure. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, I don't think they need to come that's in great. and talk to us. And is that yeah. around like Jay? Just saying like the examination of the effects of current benefit structures and contribution characteristics on the recruitment and retention, right? With state employees and teachers. That all wraps around that, correct? So that'd be great. I'm just looking at X and mm -hmm. It was interesting. I thought it was very interesting that um, what they said about the, uh, what this, was that called employee value? Mm -hmm. Uh, proposition affected um, retention much more than recruitment mm -hmm. because and and that makes sense because um, why would anybody why would anybody take a job plowing roads in December for thirteen dollars an hour when they can get paid sixteen dollars an hour to stock shelves I, I mean and get up at midnight go out and plow roads for $13 an hour, even though there's a good benefit cost. But, yeah, that was a nice framing of that whole concept. I that too. Well, I mean, I think data to an attitude is looking at a future plan, like a good healthcare plan. Me personally, my wife has a good healthcare plan. I'm not taking a job for the healthcare plan. I'm going for the compensation, mm -hmm. the actual dollar amount that you get paid. So like, you gotta remember like, you know, I'm looking at, oh, we have a great plan. I'd rather have a pain. Like, even you know, where I work, they pay us not to take the benefit health care plan. And so, like, those are other things. Like, I don't know that that's a general thing, though, because what I'm seeing in surveys and in the news and in the articles that I'm reading is that health care is like the number one thing, the number one driver. It's well, I mean, but I think it's got one partner in the relationship mm -hmm. that has that benefit. That other person frees up. And so you got to remember 50%. In that case, that percentage of your job market is able to have that flexibility. Mm -hmm. It's it's very complicated and it, it it's depends on the generation you're looking at um, and whether you think you're gonna stay in a job for for the next 20 or 30 years, or if you're going to um be, People don't say jobs like they used to. And that's true everywhere. That isn't just true here. I mean, and like we saw, five uh, in the first five years is when people leave. 
Okay, so are there other things in here? So let's ask the um, VBSA for uh, to give us a link to their survey, right? Mm -hmm. And also, there was some other place I said, that, oh, the employee um, satisfaction survey, whatever that was called. We'll just we'll put that on the on the link. Thank you. It occurs to me too that if, if there's data that people feel that we need that doesn't exist, like the exit interview questions that Andrew was asking about, it wouldn't be hard for us to do a quick Google form survey to employees and ask questions that we find critical. It's just an option. Do you, you mean to for all the people that are leaving? No, like I just mean currently uh, members of of either these are the, you know, the employees, employees or teachers. It, it's just not hard to put it out via whatever avenues we all communicate with. It's just, it's a possibility. It's not something I'm saying we should do, but if we find that we have really pressing questions that, oh, might, I see. that might inform us, yeah. you know, that's something we could consider. I see what you're saying, yeah. Well, it, I mean, just putting out a survey isn't useful because it's not necessarily relevant because it's just a number of people responding to a survey who may not represent the employee workforce so if you're going to do a real survey you're going to have to to bring in a company to do it to identify what your your mix of people needs to be in order to have accurate data that actually reflects the employee workforce so it, it's 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 actually much more complicated than just pushing out a survey if you want data that's actually representative of the workforce yeah which may be true about some of the other surveys as well. Yeah, no, yeah, any yeah. survey that's look at the methodology. You know, 10% yeah. return is a good return on the survey. Yeah. Well, it's, it's more than just a return on the survey. It's making sure that you get the right demographics and that those demographics equal the workforce demographics. Um, because if you don't have that, then it's just a bunch of people responding to a survey. Um, and it's statistically irrelevant. Which is why I never respond to surveys. Yeah. No, I mean, it was, you know, it depends what your goal is with respect to the survey. I mean, yeah. But if you're trying to get statistically relevant data with respect to the workforce, that, then it, it requires somebody who actually understands how to do that to do it. It's not just a Google form. If you're taking a portion of the population. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to be a representative of the workforce, then you need to have a representative sample of the workforce, right. not just to respond to the survey. So we have a whole list of <clears throat> things here now that we've asked for um, information on. And let's look at the ones that we had listed before and see if they're if we've satisfied those or if there's more that we need on the ones that we have not yet heard from a personal investment about in especially about retirement planning. We talked about that I mean, and I mean, I think that's something we're going to talk about. I mean, this is my idea, but I think we're kind of moved along in a sense that I mean, if we're looking at designing a plan from scratch, I think it's an interesting concept. But if, if, if the group's not there, I don't think it's worth the time. Okay. All right. Well, we might just get um, somebody to send us some information though on like what what people should be thinking about when they're well and i think you know, you know the, the old added the rule of four so if someone's retiring a forty thousand dollar year benefit you know four percent you know that's about a million dollars they would have to have a typical retirement account to be able to retire at that amount uh, you know there's those things so i think people look at their pension benefit you know they don't look at maybe the value they they built up and would have built up in that individually that's what i was going for there yeah. If you're retiring at sixty thousand a year. That's the equivalent of one point five million dollars in a retirement account. So my fifty dollars <laughs> is going to do me much good. You're saying? <laughs> okay. So, how we compare with neighboring states? Contributions, benefits. Do do we want more information on that? Yes. Yeah, I'd like to see it nationally. Yeah. Too. Okay. And um, for the contributions, the benefits, and the overall package, I think the over because <clears throat> um, it the salary is one thing, 
but and then if you add in the benefits and so there's a like Maine, Maine probably has a higher uh, retirement benefit, but they also are not a social security state, so they don't get social security. So uh, it, they aren't necessarily comparable. Right, and I, I think nationally, that makes sense, not just the regionally. Okay. And um, I'd like to see the trend over the last decade, because just quick research shows that there's been a lot of changes in the last decade. And, where were people 10 years ago? We haven't really moved in 10 years, where they moved in those 10 years to make their pension systems work. Yeah, and we do have that on here. What measures have other states taken to, to address their issues? But like the change in their plan. Yeah. Right, so what, 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 it, what have they done to, to salvage their, their plans? Is that? Yeah, I think that's really important information. I, I heard John <clears throat> mention NASRA. That's what, I, that's what I would suggest to you. Um, uh -huh. Keith Brainerd, um, uh, I think would be really good at um, uh, providing us that content. And then the impact of one-time contributions, state revenue streams, that's kind of all fits together. And we reviewed the 2009 report. Any recommendations we need to do more on that? I thought you said something this morning about looking at the earlier parts of that. Yeah, I was just going to bring that up. Um, and they, they, at the beginning of that report, they set out sort of the values for. Um, yeah, they're right there. Yeah, yeah, right. Guiding principles for a retirement plan. Um, it might, that, that might, as we wait for the actuary to come in and stuff, that, I, I think it, it, it would help us to revisit that and kind of set up our goals for our work here. We, yeah, I can. Um, yes, we can we can look at that. It's here in the report. We can look at it and see. Well, and I was going to suggest, in the context of our efforts over the next few meetings, to arrive at a common statement of the challenges, mm -hmm. you know, statement of the landscape we are in, that we might also consider adopting similar principles to guide our work going forward. Yeah, if you read them, I'm not sure there's much else to say. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I think it's probably worth reflecting on individually, right? Coming back to that. Um, but yeah, they, I mean, they, 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 they seemed, um, I, I thought they were a good place to start, um, certainly. If we could uh, take a look at those and maybe formulate our own, maybe they're very similar. But um, it's nice to have that as a uh, as a sort of that values based um, uh, kind of rudder to keep our, our work centered on. Um, uh, you know, the numbers are, are hard enough themselves, but getting the numbers to work in a way that uh, represent our, our values is even more challenging. Okay, so let's put um, guide, kind of the guiding principles and the statement of the problem in one conversation. Does that make sense? All right. Do we need other? Is there? Are we. Oh, well, we have the two things on here that we're supposed to look at: the issues of um, correction and the judges. We have to look at those two separately, and that will, I think, come later, right? And how we, because those are separate issues. I mean, they're not separate issues, but they're the judges certainly are separate issues. Yeah. Um, and, well, I mean, if you look at the, the demographics there and the visas, um, it does explain the difference in uh, pension benefits right. um, for judges, um, for law enforcement, right. and for other retirees in the system. And they're, they're quite significant differences. Right. But there is in Act 75 there, it specifically says we're supposed to address yeah. those two issues separately. Well, Sorry. The benefit plan for judges at least is much more, uh, is a nicer benefit package than for other employees. Isn't it so? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I think I misspoke when I said the SBA. I think it might have been the Vermont Principals Association that did a survey, not the Vermont School Board Association. Oh. I think I mixed up my acronyms. Okay. Do you know, Jeff, which it was? 
Okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> you think it was a VBA? Okay. VBA. BP or B? BP? Vermont Principals. Okay. BP. Vermont Principals Association. Principals. Principal. This is what it's like in a meeting in school going through all the acronyms. I hate it. It's just building and building. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so while we're talking about the, yes, yeah. So while we're talking about the, um, this kind of list of where we are, let's look at the agenda for next time and figure out where. I'm going to make a suggestion. My suggestion is that we, one of the things that we need to look at soon is the impact of one time contributions and the state revenue streams. Those questions. When you, uh, when you say state revenue, is that also uh, possible alternative revenue streams that we could look at, or just well, the stream coming into the state and this is kind of what? Well, <laughs> if there are, if there are revenue sources out there that we haven't tapped into so far, yeah. if you can come up okay. with some, <laughs> okay. I don't know. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah remember sure, sure. our process works in here. You can make the revenue stream sound good. You gotta get through one body to another yeah. body. Sure. And in reality, sure that is someone not. who doesn't like to increase revenue. Absolutely. But I do, <laughs> but I think that I think that looking at that what JFO would do is look at all the potential, potential. revenue streams mm -hmm. in the state sure. and what they how um, stable they are, what they generate, what they could generate, what it means if you increase or decrease yep. one of the streams. So, because I think that that information will, will lead to what you were talking about, Dan, mm -hmm. but I also think that it will sort of tie into what Peter Fagan was asking about earlier, which is what is the capacity mm -hmm. of the general fund, which in mm -hmm. many ways is limited by what sure. we expect the growth of the current revenue sure, source. Sure, there's only X so. number of dollars that can be spent wherever we're going to spend them. Right? But when you're talking about one time, you're talking about budget surplus money. Well, well, I think there's two different things. One is the one-time funds, and then one is the the revenue streams that we have. And they're they're both uh, fiscal well, issues. So well, I think it'd be interesting to know too, especially as before we get into the process of starting to figure where dollars to go. What's the value of one dollar today to the system? It's not one dollar and reducing that liability it has a you know a discount. It might be six point four two dollars or whatever. Mm -hmm. How do we design around that? You know, one time dollars is worth more today than it is ten dollars or ten years from today, just with the compounding effect. So I just when yeah. we're designing it, understanding what that value of that dollar is. To go to Corey's comments. Um, Five, six years ago, we received some one time money in a settlement. And there's a difference between one, one time money and, and uh, uh, unobligated funds at the end of the, end of the state fiscal year. But the, uh, the one time money received in the settlement, we split it up, did several things with it. But one of the things that we did is that we actually put funds into one of the two retirement uh, uh, packages, sorry, one of the two retirement funds, excuse me, and um, designated it for specific designation to buy down the 2038 uh, uh, contribution. So it's a perfect way of seeing what a dollar today will do with 2038, because it was fairly substantial uh, what, it, what it would do. And then as far as one-time money that might be left over unobligated at the end of the year, we have an end of year construct that's actually a statute. Half of it goes to the spendable reserve, the other half goes to uh, state employees retirement uh, system or will be added. Yeah, I was reading an article and I'm not sure that this actually happened or not, but are there grants also out there that we can look into to apply for to help the pension system? Well, grants tend to be one time. Right. So you're, and I, I would have no idea about grants available to help retirement systems, I, I, I would be highly skeptical of the, first of all, of there being any available. And secondly, if there were, if you've got 50 states mm -hmm. that would be competing for them, um, and probably a lot of um, 
Yeah. No, I, I think the reason ARPA money can't be used for pension liabilities is exactly that reason. They didn't want it to be used for grants to pensions. Mm -hmm. So is the answer no, there are no grants available for pensions? I, I, I can't imagine any. I, I just, um, I mean, there are grants for all kinds of things, right. but I can't imagine. I, I don't know. I've never heard of any. I, if anybody. It's possible um, there may be for private sector plans. Mm -hmm. Like there was. Well, there was a bailout for private sector right. plans. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> public. Explicitly. Yeah. And not, it didn't apply to public plans. Okay. Yeah. And if you're talking about people like the Ford Foundation giving us money, I suspect that that probably wouldn't happen. Agreed. All right, so can we put that on the agenda for the next time? Is that the, the one revenue, 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 revenue. yeah. <laughs> and that would probably be Steve Klein and Graham maybe. Here, if I may, um, just to remind everybody, last time we met a little while ago, I passed out a handout that just shows what we're impacting. What would that be? Yes. We put 75 million in. So, obviously, as in terms of one time money, so obviously, as things get more refined and we get FY21 data in, that analysis can be further refined, but this gives folks a relative you know, sense of the scale of putting money in um, the one major life changes that we have in. That was going back to the context of one of the charges of students to provide recommendations on how to allocate $150 million one time funds that are under a So, who is Graham? Oh, he works in the uh, Joint Fiscal Office, the tax department. Okay. He's, he's, he's a one tax. Of our tax people. Okay. Would it be helpful for the other members? I mean, I get the legislative side on this, but our general fund's not that big, and that's where the, these funds come from. So I think when people see, well, you guys probably got like a, a set, would it be helpful in the quick rundown of just the basics of our budget of like, well, I know, think the that's six, the seven billion dollars of state spends. We have like one and a half billion or whatever, one point six billion. That's the general fund, and pensions eat up like thirty percent of that already. And so that's where we get to that. You know, we can't control a lot of like school boards. There's a lot of our budget we can't control because it's federal dollars and other things. So I just don't know if that makeup is helpful. Oh, I think that that was one of the things that. Uh, we talked about with Steve Klein was what 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 what's coming in now and where is it going and what, how much is it and what if you say you increase the sales tax one percent what would that mean in terms of generating new revenues or, I, I, I think or, it would be helpful to for us as a task force to look at the dollar figure of this year's ADEC payment relative to all of the other departments that are smaller that have a smaller total budget than than this year's ADEC payment because i think it's a, it is a bit stunning oh like yeah, look at how, the, the where budget. we have to spend money right like i okay. mean you really have to take a look at it from a state level when you include you know pre-k and k-12 and then benefits like four something like four 40 cents of every dollar the state spends goes to education, so capacity. Like we break it down in various buckets, but you know, when you look at, you know, like that kind of a thing, and it's not a bad way, but it just, you know, how much of our dollars and controllable dollars specifically are already going to this problem? Why is this a problem that we're having to address now? So I think some people go, you got to find a hundred million in a seven billion dollar budget. You, know, you got to find a hundred million in a billion dollar budget is, is what you got to find or whatever the number is. Yeah, I think that we need a every we all need a better understanding of the of the state budget and how where it comes from, where it goes, and what it means to any increases or changes. What that would mean. So, so. that's a part of the um, like just looking at X seventy five. That's one of the bigger things that you guys, um, Andrew, I think Eric, and you as well. You talk about it's like they have it under I three the state's pension contributions as a percentage of the direct general spending and a comparison of other state pension contributions. So that's something that we're all sort of in bits and pieces getting to that main central thing of examine. So is this something that we can use the Act 75, um, what is, what do we call those? Those are bullet points or whatever? Yeah, those as are As we cast. form the agenda, um, just looking to make sure we're covering all the stuff as we're gathering all the information. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. okay. Thank you for referring back to our charge as a task force. <laughs> <laughs> just, just 
thinking about the um, kind of revenue piece and trying to understand it better. Um, JFO does, um, I, don't, I don't really know what the word is, but sort of they take a look at different revenue options upon request during the sessions, of the parade. Um, is there, would we have access to those? They're on their website, there's a, a book that we get as legislation, it's called um, the Fiscal Facts. And there's a page in there that like says a 1% increase in sales tax is heading toward like $86 million. Or, you know, like it shows basically, it doesn't get into detail if you're like to tie it, but it, it will show like what a small, you know, what a small adjustment is and you know, what kind of the, the rent rate is. So you can see that. Thanks. I may, if anybody has some time uh, this weekend um, and you have access to a computer, you go on the JFO website under publications, it's called Fiscal Facts. It's the very first thing I read when I started working here. Um, and it gives you a very good overview of the revenue picture of the state, the relative size of different departmental budgets, a lot of history about taxes and, and revenues over time, and how much sort of a 1% increment or a 1 cent increment generates. The caveat is we update these over the winter. So the most recent one came out in um, January, so that was based on um, the FY20 or 21 budget that was originally adopted. Not based on the budget that was just passed. But it gives you a good time ballpark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a great resource. Thanks for mentioning that. It's really <laughs> riveting. <laughs> no, it is. Especially it is. on Saturday. It, it, it really is. I mean, it's, <laughs> it is. Should we all zoom on Saturday to go over it? Or, uh... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so what else do we need to put on for next? How long is this conversation going to take, do we think? Revenue, I feel like, could be a long time to discuss, personally. Good you know, the background information, <laughs> talking about different revenue streams, um, sharing the, ideas. The permanent and temporary revenue stream. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're talking about? The permanent and temporary revenue stream, right? Well, or yeah, one, one time yeah. and permanent and what the, the whole... Oh, the whole budgetary process, the where it comes from, where it goes, who spends it, who's, and and as Corey said, what comes out of general fund, what we have control over, and what comes to us from the feds that we really don't have control over, which is also part of part of that budget, and um, and where. What comes out of the general fund? For example, DOC is completely general fund. There's, that's, there's no federal money, no Medicaid, no nothing in DOC. It's all general fund. So it sounds like just, between that and maybe looking at developing some guiding principles and defining the problem, that, that might take up a whole meeting. Defining the problem. And I'd love to see us build in the morning. That's all. <laughs> That's, you, you, have, you have to throw things at Sarah here because I'm terrible about that. I will put I, it on the agenda. Keep it. Keep it. I really Who's going to be the agenda person? So stick to it. I, I know. We put breaks in. And you just have to raise your hand and yell. <laughs> and we'll put a break in. I'm thinking a little bit about how that morning might be structured and I have my teacher hat on now, but um, we've had a lot of information coming at us and very little process time. And I'm wondering if we might structure it in a way just with two really simple questions of, uh, you know, looking at a sheet and then giving ourselves time to say, what do you notice? What do you wonder? And doing that individually even, um, because I think sometimes, you know, minds that haven't seen something might notice and wonder something that nobody else has thought of, and minds that are seeing it at a different time, with an, another time, the time to reflect, might also. And I, I'm just kind of curious, because just because it would be different than what we've done, and it's a process that's used a lot in Vermont schools, <laughs> you know, as a way to flesh out ideas. So I'm curious how that would work around the. Uh, 
revenue and budget information that's given to us how how you would structure that so because like if you if you were to show you or whoever were to show the the committee a portion of the budget say um and then you know you can do it with sticky notes and going around the room and putting them on posters you can do it with the thing called jamboard online where people make put reflections online and we see each other's work um it's just it's just something i'm putting out there to be a little more interactive and um maybe stimulating Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of it. I, I'm not a teacher, so I know, I know. it's I, my world. I'm so. trying to think of how you would have a present a budget presentation and re revenue presentation, and then have interaction. I, is your goal to 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 slow down and and have a an intentional pause that allows people to reflect, or is your goal to um, I don't know to make it less intimidating to reflect or ask a question than if what we did today, you know, was people raise their hands. I'm just trying to understand if the objective is to um, is to give time or or is it to encourage more reflection? Um, both. I think time encourages more reflection, and so having time to look at something. Um, and think about it for a moment in our 13 brains might generate a level of creativity that moving quickly through it doesn't. And I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't I have to think a little bit, maybe I don't have a clear perception of what would be presented, you know, to know how to structure it or answer that question more. Well, I think there was a lot of value in for these first few meetings in taking the the first you know thirty minutes or today forty five minutes of the meeting to reflect on what we did last time, and so um, maybe we should do that again next time, but then also think about ways that we can build in within the conversation for the rest of the task force meeting that day, you know, better better ways of reflecting. I mean, part of part of what's also valuable about reflecting is to be able to reflect with with your colleagues, you know, so that in some ways, those 10 15 minute breaks that we take or lunchtime, if you went for a walk with, you know, other task force members are also a, a time to say, you know, this is what I thought, what did you think kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, I may have to call you to find out if you have suggestions on ways of ways of encouraging more uh, more reflection during the meeting. I do think a lot of what's going to be presented around revenue is is information that's coming to us. There's there might be hard to imagine. A lot of creativity around around thinking about the the revenue streams, but we can hope for some. <laughs> I do like the idea of having uh, you know wall anchors with some sticky notes of you know, today I learned about how I learned with funding um, questions I still have um, things that I think I understand but maybe I don't and just looking at it. Um, is it better to do it that way than to just have that conversation here think, with people? I think both. Um, you know, I noticed sometimes today that um, yeah, I had multiple questions for Treasurer Pierce, um, and sometimes we would get 10, 15 minutes down the road. I'm like, I still have a question about that, and wanting to go back is hard, knowing that she wanted to get through so much, but I felt it was important to circle back to it. Um, so if we had something even just physical of, you know what, I'm going to take my sticky notes and just jot that down and pop it on the poster. Um, so what we can come back to it at some point is just helpful. I know by the end of the day, starting at nine and finishing at four, some of the questions that I had earlier probably left my brain, even though I've expressed them. So having yeah. it 
having something which is the right so it's got to be called the parking lot so you know you have a, a post right. on the wall it's called the parking lot everyone has stickers and just you know we all know we can get up and throw something on the parking lot just little teaching <laughs> i can leave you in song if you need <laughs> no thank you <laughs> not to be <laughs> But no. Um, there was one other thing that I thought here about that we should look at. Oh, do we have um, do we have time to to look at any of the comparables with other states? in that same NASA. session or do you think that that's um so there's two things i mean the data exists mm -hmm. so it's easy to get the data um i think it's actually attached to the the well, either the treasury report or the 2009 report um, had comparable data obviously it would be data that was from 2009 but nasa has it um the question is do we want a presentation on it um, mm -hmm. and so you know that could take some time, but I think what would be more important is um, a presentation on what their what the trends are with respect to benefit changes, um, what states have done to tackle this problem. And I think. Oh yeah, we were talking about that. Yeah. The last thing about yeah. looking at states that are similar in size. And, well, they no one state is the same size, but similar in size to Vermont that have the defined. Um, Right, the data exists for virtually every state as to how their defined benefit plan is set up. Um, I don't know if we need a presentation on that um, because it, it it suits well and to be in a data format rather than having someone go through all 50 states and tell you how they're right. they're different. Um, you can look. Um, but what might be more interesting is you know getting a presentation from NASRA on what states have done to modify their pensions to address similar issues to what we're facing. And how have they, how's that worked out? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and there's some good examples of, you know, yeah. you know, there's like West Virginia who attempted to go to a defined contribution plan and found out it was really more costly to do that than sticking with a defined benefit plan. Um, so there are some good lessons to be learned from looking at what other states have done uh, to uh, modify their pension plans. I think I think both are important, and I I totally agree that having someone go through every state in terms of uh, you know where they fit in doesn't make sense. But maybe Nazareth could touch on where Vermont fits in. I know I found um, Keith's uh, presentation where he did some of that comparative analysis. I thought it was really helpful in kind of putting put, putting our ourselves in context. When when he did that, did he? also compare other aspects of the states i, I mean like um average salaries of non-public employees and i, I mean I, i'm just trying to think of whether or not that was part of the presentation in terms of populations and area size um you, you know how much how much infrastructure do you have to maintain with a certain population as opposed to another state that I don't know if that was part of his or if he just did the. I don't remember it being in that detail, but I okay. think he did make comments on, you know, sort of sitting, grounding into other New England states and so forth. <laughs> and there's actually a lot of diversity in New England states as well. I guess New York is not technically New England, but um, there's New York is in a very different position than all other New England states. Uh, I think the gentleman's name is Keith Brainerd. He it works with NASR, which is the National Association of State Retirement Administrators. Um, and he provided some context on both DSERS and DSTERS uh, during the last legislative session. In terms of employee contribution rates, employer contribution rates, um, there was, there was um, information on the level of benefits and so forth. Um, I think he, he also has knowledge on 
for where the direction the states are going to start too. So. so what if we instead, I don't know if that'll fit in. Kate suggested that just the, the two conversations might be enough for that one day. So if we looked at the revenue in the morning and then um, uh, at one o'clock looked at forming um, a statement about what the problem so that we have a common understanding of what what the issue is and what the problem is and then and then um, took a break and then did um, looked at these guiding principles and how how we might um, incorporate those is that I like the way that sounds. I just wanted to ask a question on the guiding principles. So I, I was thinking of it from all of this morning as sort of principles guiding our um, work. Then I looked at the 2004 so guiding principles about what a three-point package should be. Yeah. So I, I don't know, maybe it's old, but it's, I, I was thinking that was the first time. Now the 2009 is a different sort of approach. This makes it more Yeah, we could have that conversation. Where, is there a difference? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that time in the afternoon to set the next agenda? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, so we're not doing NASA next week. I feel like we might be able to fit in an hour with NASA next week. Okay. Okay. In just the afternoon. I mean, because just check. the statement of the problem and the Review of some principles shouldn't take us I don't know if it's three just hours. Review of principles, though, it may be creation of principles. If they're that different from two thousand nine, if if the charges were different at the times, like I think that's what that conversation was down at that end of the table was that what we review of two thousand nine might not be the guiding principles for this group. I think it's hard to come up. It feels a little bit like we're spinning wheels and that we don't have traction because we don't have that work plan that would come from defining the process that starts with defining a problem and having some overarching guiding principles for us to work under. Are you talking about principles of, I, I'm, I'm getting myself a little confused here now because what 2009 did is principles of, as Mike pointed out, principles that we want are for our retirement plan. Not, not how we're going to operate, but the principles under which, like, um, the benefit plan should provide a solid foundation for retirement security following a career in public service. They, they are like seven different principles here. The principles of how we operate is that I, I well, I just want to go back to like this whole started, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, Dan, but you talked about guiding principles in the same breath as talking about goal posts. Mm -hmm. And so I wonder if maybe you should be the one speaking to this. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, for me, it's at the end of the day, what, you know, again, uh, specifically here to, to uh, make decisions and make uh, tough decisions about our pensions and our benefits. Mm -hmm. So as a group, I think it's important for us to understand exactly like you said, what do we want our pension to look like? What are the principles that we want our pensions to, 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 to satisfy uh, as we look at this and use that as our uh, principle? Sustainability, obviously, is a huge one. How are we going to do that? Things like that. So that's, that's where I was going with that. Maybe not so much as a, a, a whole, but at the end of the day, uh, when I have to go back and, and, and explain to the people I work with, this is what's going on and this is the decisions that we've made. And this is the reason why, right? Because we decided that these five, four things were extremely important to the pension benefits for all of us. And these are the things that kind of guided us in our decision-making. Yeah, I, when, I, when I look at how we, the, the, so there's a difference between the, the goalposts and where we wanna go in that, principles of how we want our retire what we want our retirement plan to look like and then there's the process of that what we use and when i look at that i and i may be wrong here but it's very pretty simple in my mind 
that we're defining, we're defining the common ground. We're getting the, well, we're getting the information, the background information so that we all have the same information and then defining the common ground and what the, what the problem is that we're trying to solve. Where, and then start looking at potential um, changes, solutions that to, to address these goal, these guidelines. And that's where, when we start doing that, that's where the people like the actuarial and the legal people need to be involved as we come up with um, potential changes. And we get to a point where we hopefully agree on some of those potential changes that will meet these guidelines and um, adopt them. I, in my mind, it's pretty simple, but that is just the way I operate. I don't know what anybody else thinks. About I that. just stay focused on Act 75 and the guidelines because it's not like it's simple for me as well. In general, of yes, we have our guiding principles on what, what we want to accomplish for the pensions on time. But with Act 75, we have specific <laughs> goals around everything that we're here for. And I'm very interested in how, as we gather information, right, from all different sources, like we talked about this morning, not just JFO, we're bringing in different people, having witnesses, and all of that. But it's really about reaching the goals, not even goals, reaching the um, what would you say? The, the charge. Yes, the charge mm -hmm. that is in Act 75, trying to do the best job we can about protecting the pension right. benefits of state employees and teachers and doing what we can and making sure we're doing it with the, the most informed decision because we have all the information. So I guess to me, with Act 75, I'm, I'm like, I have that, that's on my computer. That's the thing that I refer to all day because I'm like, okay, everybody's making, you know, whenever Andrew mentioned something like, yep, that goes right into what we're going to be working on and what we need to bring it to the floor when um, Sarah, see, I was planning to say, Jesus Christ. I didn't, <laughs> I Thank you, Leona. Um, but um, just all of that, as we're going through, I'm just like, oh yeah, that's going to be a part of what we're, we're here for. So that is right. my, you know, looking at the charge mm -hmm. and keeping that, for, in that in the forefront, that helps when next week we make the plan on what is our mission? What are we excited about? What are we going to be doing and making our um, plan moving forward? So maybe we could add that to the agenda in the afternoon is just revisiting Act 75 uh, and kind of maybe trying to come up with a, 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 a detailed work plan for us in the following meetings. Lots think, of T charts around the room sticking yeah, out just no. follows that. <laughs> I think That's we could just make a simple bullet point um, of all the, the charges that are here, just and um, hopefully all the information that we're gathering and decisions that we have to make are are addressing these in the end. And I don't think that uh, I don't see them all as separate, dealing with them separately. That. Instead, as we make decisions, we're going to be looking at, well, how does that affect recruitment and retention? And how does that impact the workforce? Uh, so it's all, but we can make a, a nice bullet point yeah. um, form on that. We can all keep in front of us. Yeah, it seems to me like, you know, when I went through the law here last night, probably. <laughs> Because it keeps swimming in my head, I, I see like 10 basic charges. So then I see either a 10 page document with like, here's what we know so far about each of these things, and we're adding to it constantly. And then a box at the bottom where questions can go, or a poster for each one where we're, you know, we're putting in what we know so far, and then stickies go up with the questions. So somebody can sort of keep track of where we are with each of those 10 and what questions people have and what um, curiosities people have about them. I don't know about others. I'm struggling to track it all. To keep, you know, to, I've got a lot swimming around and I feel like we've had so much really juicy stuff and I don't want to lose the thoughts that I had or that we collectively had in each discussion. 
And if we were to get supplies to put that together, is that something that you might want to be sort of the, the keeper of in terms of writing the question or, or I mean, I'm just trying to think of where, where does this resource lie in between meetings? Right. I mean, do we all take a snapshot of it with our cell phone at the end of the meeting and, and sort of ponder it that way? Or were you thinking that that would go someplace else? I mean, it could be digital and we don't have access on our computers too, you know, to have it as a slideshow or something like that, you know, where each page is a, is a, um, what, would, what could be one poster? I don't know, it's just like, I'm formulating it, so I guess I don't have an answer. Yeah. But I mean, I think I'd be a note taker if, if that's what you're looking for, or- Well, I'm just trying to, I mean, we, something up. this is something that's different than how we have ever organized ourselves in, in meetings that I've mm -hmm. been chairing here. And so I guess I was just wondering if this was something that you felt comfortable you know, if we can ask staff to get a bunch of sticky notes and, and a and a poster board um, pad, you know, is that something that that you would want to be helping to facilitate? How do people? What do you think as learner? I mean, do people here feel like you would work best with something digital, or with some where we're recording our progress digitally, or recording our progress in poster form? Are we going to come out with the same 10 to three, like <laughs> three people want digital and the rest like paper? I'll go with paper. Or maybe nobody else is interested in this and it's the whole thing. Taylor Dory, are you going to say something? I, I'm, no. I really must admit that I'm having a hard time trying to figure out how, how this would work. I mean, there, Here's one of the things is um, a five-year review of benefit expenditure levels as well as employer contributions and a 10-year, five-year project, year projection of these levels and rates. And that's information that, I mean, I don't know how, what we do with that in terms of um, putting it on a poster or a, or a something and um, assessing the impacts associated with any modifications to the current amortization schedule. So we get the information and I'm having a hard time figuring out how we how we take these these and um so so um yeah. actually this is I'd have to refer you guys as the teachers. Kate, <laughs> Andrew and Molly, they introduced me to actually using Google Doc, you know? But um, I think it's really about, we've gotten a lot of, over the last, well, really two and a half days, we've had a lot of information, you know? And it's great because this is information we all need to, you know, all be on the same page. So we're saying basically for each of those charging statements there, you're going, okay, who did we have speak about this? And we have that handout because I think Andrew was like, which handout was that? And he just turned out, he's like, okay, I have that one. Just saying, tracking the information for each of those points like okay we have this information here and we had a discussion from this witness about this it's not about um i think i think that's how i interpret it it's just keeping track have we talked about this is this something we have to explore further but it's just each of those i think you said 10 10 of those just keeping track of where we are in the process of addressing that issue but i don't know Oh, I, I thought that's what we were doing with this list. That's right. Yep, and of, that's of the, just based off the of 75. That's what we were talking about. But if that's um, incorporating that into that, that'd be awesome. You know, here's what I will do. I will look at the, the points that we're supposed to be doing. I mean, the tasks that we're supposed to be doing. And I will look at the information that we've gotten so far and put it underneath there and then um, kind of add it to this document here that yes, we, we had that, we've done this, we've looked at that. And so that it's in a form that also can go into a report at the end when we do a report on what we heard and what we, is, is that, and then, and then if we wanna do beyond that in terms of 
what we have left to learn about those things. Yeah. We can look at it. Yeah, that is what I was going to say too. If you want, I can mock something up. You can look at it and see if you like it. Okay. I did not let it go. I, I don't mind spending a little bit of time putting something together because people could look at it and say, yeah, this doesn't work for me at all. Or, okay. oh, that would be great. Put someone to that. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? So did we decide that we should do a, have a Nazra thing next time or put that off until well, the next I one? I get a little confused about where we have to as far as the That's due date. Um, I mean, hey, I need to reach out to Nazra and see if they could yes. come next week. But That's pretty soon, isn't it? Yeah. So maybe at the August we'll meeting. After. Yeah, the August meeting. I'll plan for two meetings for now. So let's look at the revenue in the morning, developing the problem statement in the afternoon, looking at the principles and looking at this, whatever we're going to do here and, and having, I think, beginning the conversation about um, public input, how we're okay. the ideas for that. And I think Sarah had mentioned um, how we kind of kicked off today with reflection time on the past meetings built in right off. Yep, we can do that. Great. Just one other thing, Jeanette, um, for the task force is well, most of the actuarial work cannot start right away. Um, looking at cross subsidization yep. between the various groups can start right away. And I just want to know if we want to give um, requests that Siegel um, begin that work. Yes. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we won't get it. <laughs> did we get the date for after September? Or did I mean? No, I was I was going to I was gonna review those. Um to, uh, I was gonna review those at lunch and um I encourage you I, to eat lunch. And you didn't and so, and so <laughs> I, and I didn't. I, so um, has any, and I don't have a, an iPad with me. I don't know if anybody has um, reviewed that. The, you mean the, the, the Google poll for the after September? Uh, we're still missing two entries and I've sent out emails um, so that those two people can- Who are they? We'll yeah, let's call them out right now. <laughs> well, Come on. October started my wife's due, so- <gasps> Oh, yeah. Months, so to go, I'm- I'm up in the air. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> well, we can okay, be so with that. Yeah. So I'll be flexible. And okay. And um, so who's the other one? Is it me? Uh, well, I oh. guess it's me because I didn't look at my email yet today. So if we came today, okay. it's gone. All right. So. so as soon as we get those. Um, yeah, as soon as those come in, I'll send the report to the whole group. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. And just to let everybody know, too, I'm developing a repository of all the documents that you've reviewed so far. It's going to be on OneDrive, so you'll be receiving an invitation to be able to go in there to refer to all the documents. Great. I'm looking good so far for 100% participation. We've got two days, we've got 100% participation on the, on the uh, Doodle poll. From now until I mean from September until oh three. One, two, four. 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 Oh, four is better than that. <laughs> I didn't scroll right. All right. Um so I'm did, ending the live stream now. Okay. And I have per diem sheet 